Hello, dear ones. Reverend Beth Simmons here on this very warm, maybe last um, attempt at summer to hang on <laughs> day um, with a midweek moment. It's a little later than midweek, but but still wanted to come to you with some thoughts. So there is a piece of writing that is circulating through all the clergy circles, or at least all the clergy circles that I'm in, um, shared, shared just by everybody, um, about one pastor's resignation and his leaving of the church um, and parish ministry in general. And I have admittedly not had a chance to read it yet because um, it's already been a busy week. And, but, um, it, this is nothing really new. We know that pastors are leaving the ministry. We know that, um, parish ministers tend to have, um, lower rates of happiness and contentment, higher rates of, um, illness, mental and physical, um, higher rates of burnout, etc. It's a very demanding profession, you know, um, not that it's more demanding, say, than um, than many other helping professions, uh, teachers, social workers, doctors, such as that. But that's where the statistics are, right? This is where we are. Um, now, there's lots of suggestions as what those, why this is, right? Lack of self-care on the part of the clergy people, um, you know, too much demand for... Um, for a model of ministry that cannot exist um, now. So, for example, a model from the 70s, say, 50s, 60s, 70s, somewhere. Um, the 1900s, we'll, we'll just paint a broad stroke there, um, that cannot exist in the 21st century world of dual income families and um internet and social media and busy and the lives of people. Um, but I have a theory that I'm going to throw out there today. And again, I have not read this specific article or any of the many well-written um, responses to it, um, which I will share a few of them in the comments or in the description below. I'll share the link to the article. I'll share the comments so you can all take your own gander at it if you if you feel so inclined. Um, I think there's a lot of grief happening. Um, we have been told for the last 20 years at least um, that the mainline Christian church is a dying institution. And study or not, it is visible in our daily lives as congregations, not just by clergy, but by parishioners as well. And there is grief that comes along with that. Even if we are willing to use our imaginations and get creative and start thinking of new and different ways to be church together, we are still losing some things that have brought us comfort, that have guided us through our lives, that have um, been passed on through generations, perhaps. Um, and there is grief in that loss. That does not mean that loss is not necessary. Um, or that it's not going to happen whether we want it to or not. Um, but I think recognition of it as grief might inform the way that we do church and are in relationship with each other as clergy and church folk. Because if you've ever known anyone who's been grieving, 
or have gone through grief yourself, you know that grief can make us act in unreasonable ways. It is reasonable for grief. It is unreasonable outside of the, uh, the picture of grief. We have anxiety. We have denial. We have anger. Um, we have all kinds of um, ways of dealing with loss that some ways are healthy and some ways are not. And I think that often comes up. And, and it's really hard to do church when we are grieving. If we're not recognizing the grief, if we're not offering spaces for lament, for sorrow, for that anxiety about the unknown, in order to process it, if we just forge ahead and say, and either path, right? If we forge ahead with the path of, we are going to stick with the way that things have always been and what has always worked for us in the past. And we're going to just do it harder and bigger and more and demand more of our pastor and to keep things status quo. Then somehow, if the pastor does it right, the church will grow and by grow, we mean more people will be in the pews on Sunday mornings for worship. And more people will be giving financially. And we will survive and we will, and you know, and if that doesn't happen, that's the pastor's fault. Or controversially, if we say we are throwing everything out, we have to start over from scratch. Nothing in this old model is useful uh, or sacred. And so we're going to just... Um, just completely revamp everything. Both of those models ignore one, the reality and two, the sense of loss that goes along with what's actually happening. I don't have an answer. I'm not bringing to you this with here's my magic. <laughs> my magic solution for this all, except that coming at maybe with a curiosity, a curiosity of what it might look like to acknowledge the grief, to acknowledge the grief of parents and grandparents whose children and grandchildren and great grandchildren even don't want to be part of something that is so holy and sacred and life-giving to them. To acknowledge the grief of young people who are searching for something that they can't even name, but they know the church doesn't fulfill it for them. To acknowledge the grief of the pastors who are struggling every day to figure out what the heck we're doing. To be doing our very best to follow God's call on our lives. To love deeply the people with whom we share ministry. To wrestle with bad behavior and uh, unhealthy systems and people acting out their grief in ways that damage us and our sense of call and our desire to stay in this profession. And I had another point and then I lost my train of thought. I apologize, but I just wonder as the season changes, I'm looking out on my backyard and seeing the, the leaves on the ground and shifting colors in the trees and a very golden hue to everything, despite the heat.
and wonder if we are in the autumn of this church season. Not the winter, not the winter yet, the autumn. And if we can acknowledge the joy and beauty, beauty that has been brought before and also that there's something new to come, but it's okay to be grieving and to just step back for a second and wonder sometimes if the conflicts within a congregation that arise, no matter what, no matter how wonderful your, your pastor is, no matter how wonderful your congregation is, things will come up. We're people, we're humans. We have flaws and emotions and, and the world to deal with. And so we will have conflicts, but how we deal with those We need to remember that we are absolutely wrapped up in grief. And perhaps we might hold each other on both sides with a little more tenderness and a little more grace and a little more understanding while also still maintaining really good boundaries and expectations for what is appropriate behavior so that we don't damage each other. So that don't we layer a new different type of loss and grief on top of that which already exists. All right, so not the most uplifting midweek moment, perhaps. But I hope maybe it gives you food for thought. And again, I will post the links to these, um, to this article and some responses. And I may compose my own response once I've actually read it as well. But um, But yeah. Just recognize the layers of grief, perhaps, as you read these. Have that in the back of your mind. Um, that this is where we are. This is the season. And it's really hard for churchgoers. And it's really hard for pastors. We didn't get into this job for the money, certainly or the um, status, perhaps it used to be a clergy and, <laughs> and community um, weight gain. Uh, and I don't mean that physically, I mean, you know. But those of us who have come into the ministry in the last 30 years or so know that that's not, not the uh, trajectory for us. We do this because we love God and we love God's people and we are trying our very best to keep the two in relationship to each other, to expand and explore that relationship and to keep ourselves in that relationship as well. Friends, if you have a pastor, and I'm saying this to my uh, my church people or people beyond my, my congregation, reach out to them and just um, just say hi if you need to. Express your appreciation if you feel so inclined, but I'm not I'm not asking. I have no I you know um, it's just helpful once in a while. Um and if you're a pastor watching this, reach out to your people and acknowledge and ask maybe about their grief um, and see what comes up. Approach always with curiosity rather than condemnation. This has already gone a little long, but will you be in a, just a moment of prayer with me?
holy one. Those you have called into this ministry in your churches are exhausted often. And at times still inspired and encouraged and hopeful for what we can do together with your people in these congregations. May your spirit be upon each of us, offering us fresh air and guidance and refreshment and comfort in the face of our grief. We offer this to you as our common prayer. Amen. Friends, I hope the rest of your week is wonderful. And if you are aware it is very warm, that you stay cool. And uh, enjoy the fruits of the harvest of this time of year and each other. <laughs>